Hello, Floss Tube. It's a cold January day in Utah. I have the day off from work because it's Martin Luther King day, Jr. Day. And my husband has it off as well, which is good because he has a commute into Salt Lake City. And it is uh, was snowing when I woke up this morning. It's predicted to snow all day long. So the roads out there are a bit of a mess. I've seen the snow plow go by a couple times. I think we got three or four inches so far and the wind right now is blowing and blowing it out of the trees. So wonderful day to be snowed in at home, right? On a holiday when a lot of people don't have to be to work, so that's good. And a good stitchy day. Warm, cozy, stitchy day. I don't have Catherine here today, obviously, but I'll give you an update on her. She has not started another cross stitch yet. Uh, this week she's been working on a puzzle that she got for Christmas, a really hard puzzle when she's not at work or all of her other things that she does. Uh, let's jump right into whips. This is my headache garden. This is an adaptation of Temperature Garden by uh, Stitch and Mommy on Etsy where you record the temperature every day, colors assigned to different temperatures in your area. I adapted it a little bit, um, changed the flowers a little bit so there would be seven petals on each flower because I needed to know where the Mondays were. Um, and it's how I track my uh, migraine headaches because it's better. My neurologist likes it when I keep a journal so I can kind of see what's going on. And January so far has been abysmal, abysmal for headaches. I do not want to see red, yellow, or orange, but that's all there is. I would love to see some blues, some greens, longing for a purple day, but the good news is that it's doing a very good job at making me keep my journal every day. It has done its, uh, it's fulfilled its purpose so far of, um, Encouraging me, reminding me that I need to write it down, what's going on. Um, but January's been bad. Apparently there's some triggers you can avoid and some you just cannot. But I love, it's beautiful. It's beautiful to look at. I think it's really cute. I'm really liking it. But that's um, Temperature Garden by Stitch and Mommy on Etsy. This is 28 count Jobelin. I think Jobelin is 28 count. Uh, summer Sky. And I left a good, instead of coming in three inches from the corner, I came in four and a half inches from the corner and made sure my piece of fabric was big enough because I think I'm going to put a border around it eventually and it, I'm going to title it, like put the year in that it was headache garden, not temperature garden, just so I have some data of what it was on there later. But that's why I made the fabric extra big and have, I've left it enough around the border so when I figure out what border I want I'm going to pick something simple that doesn't drive me nuts um, or else you know Catherine will be doing it that uh, so I can add it later when I figure out what it is I want to do or maybe I'll change my mind and never add a border who knows who knows Stitch and Mommy also has um, she has a flower garden to record the temperature she also has a, a quilt that's in long strips in um, triangle pieces where you can record the high and the low. She also has a, a temperature, a flower garden that you can record the high and the low. And hot air balloons where the design, the diamond design in the balloons is where you can record the high for the temperature for each day. It's kind of fun to look at. I love them. I love the idea. All right. I work on um, my Disneyland piece is a, it's not by Heaven and Earth Designs, but it's that type of a piece. And I've been doing the full coverage challenge from their Facebook group um, to get in three, 1200 stitches a month. I think I'm gonna try that this year just to keep this moving along. So I don't work on it every day cause that's only, I do a 10 by 10 square at a time, which takes about an hour. So I need to do three of those a week. So I do, um, just on days that I know I'm going to have a lot of stitching time, I'll take an hour and do one of the blocks. This week I actually didn't get any done clear till Saturday, but had a good long stitching time Saturday, so I did three, all three of my one 10 by 10 blocks on Saturday for this week. But um, 
I worked on more of Thunder Mountain Railroad, which used to be the mining train before it was Thunder Mountain Railroad. Um, this part right here is what I worked on. So that's moving right along. I'm so excited. I love the colors on this piece. I love that it has enough detail that it looks like Disneyland to me and reminds me of all the times I've been there and the happy memories, but not quite as intense as a heaven and earth design. Not as big, not as many colors. But I'm loving that. I got that on Etsy. Here is the picture. Her name is Nenny Design. N-E-N-I-D-E-S-I-G-N. -E Nenny Design. And this is the full picture. Which I think looks like to me that someone scanned an old poster. An old retro poster of Disneyland. And made it into a crossage. They did a good job. Oh, and I... I used the called for colors DMC it's on 40 count dwarf except I looked in where there were large blocks of maybe I should show you on the picture better where there were large blocks of one color that I could tell kind of from the picture that this color was going to be used a lot in large blocks I um, substituted some Gloriana silks that had a nice variegation in them because I love the look of the variegated thread so I knew where those large blocks of one color would be nice if they had some variegated thread so for all the pink I changed to oh this is actually um Belsois silks orchid I changed to orchid for the pinks uh for the light blues I changed to Gloriana blue heron What else, if I can see it? For these medium blues, I changed to Gloriana Denim Blue. For the dark blue color, I changed to Gloriana In the Navy. Mm, for all those lovely lime greens that are in there, I changed to Gloriana Halloween Green. has been so fun and oh for these orangey reds colors I changed to Gloriana cinnamon and I think that's all oh no one more for the tealy colors in fact, there were two colors. You can see that there's kind of two colors in here. This is Gloriana Peacock Blue. There were two different DMCs, and I converted. Anytime either one of those is used, I'll use this Peacock Blue. They were both tealy blue colors. So that's been fun. I am really enjoying that, and I'm hoping to finish that this year. Catherine's listening, saying, uh-huh, really, Mom, really? <laughs> All right, the other piece that I work on almost every day is Shores of Hawthorne Hollow. I work on that usually the first hour that I sit down to stitch. This is what it looks like. It's by Carriage House Samplings. This is my, gosh, fifth? Let's see. Okay, I did Houses of Hawthorne Hollow. I've done Villages of Hawkrun, I've done Halloween, not Halloween, Autumn at Hawkrun Hollow. So this is fourth. I think this is my fourth Hawkrun Hollow. Shores. I did not do it for my daughter, Catherine. If you look at our very first video together, she shows you hers. She's finished this piece as well. This is the only Hawkrun Hollow piece she's done. She did it on this called for uh, beautiful, deep, tan, sand color, almost an orangey. And these colors pop on it. It's gorgeous. So go back and watch our video number two, maybe, or three, where I did that first one I did with Catherine. And you can see hers and mine right next to each other. So you can see the difference. I did not do it on this fabric. I chose a green instead. And we finally figured out it was, by the help of the people who comment and watch these videos, thank you so much, we figured out that it was Picture This Plus Heritage. I had ordered a whole bunch of fabrics 
if you're at a store that has a lot of hand-dyed fabrics, you can kind of do a floss toss and decide which one you want. But I was being lazy and ordering from home. So I just ordered like four or five different fabrics from different um, companies that do hand-dyed fabric, looking for the kind of green that I wanted. And then couldn't remember which. I had a tag for everything else that I didn't choose, but the one I did choose, I didn't have a tag for. Couldn't find the tag. So it's 40 count. Picture this plus heritage, which is a very... Uh, light green with a little bit of gray in it but I love it because it makes the reds really pop and I did finally finish all the gray fill in on that block right there that was December's block and I did finish it not by the end of December I still had all that a lot of that gray fill in by the end of December so I was just putting one thread into that and then decided to do this block right underneath it for December so that I didn't have to move the key snaps. So the key snaps were on there just enough to, at the top, I could work on this one thread at a time and then work, come down and work on this a little bit every day. I usually do at least one thread on this when I sit down to stitch or about an hour, depending on how much time I have before I go on to the next piece. And then that keeps this one moving along because I want to finish one block per month so that it is done before Mania in May, uh, which is M-A-Y-N-I-A. -A. And if you want to know more about the Mania celebration that's kind of spread through the floss tube world, this stitching world <laughs> in the month of May every year, then go to the Facebook group um, Stitch Mania and you can learn more about it there. But it's basically celebrating a whole bunch of new starts in the month of May. And this was one of my Mania. Uh, last year I did five whips and the rest were new starts. I did 18 starts for the year 2018 last year, the first 18 days in the month of May. And so I am going to do it. That's the first time I'd ever done it. It was lots of fun. I've gotten more stitching done this year than I ever have, partly because of mania and partly because of making these videos. But it gave me a, a deadline, a reason to finish a piece that I'd gotten tired of because um, I'm going to do the blimey cat method. She was one of the original people who did it in 2015, where if you, she kept track of what pieces she started on which day in May, and then, and I'll do the same thing this year for 2019. If I have not finished the piece that I started on May 6th, then I will keep working on that piece on May 6th. And then you can, if you finished the piece that you started on that day, then you can start a new piece. Um, I last year decided that there were five whips that I really wanted to finish. So I made the five whips part of my mania, did them on certain days in the month of May, and then the rest were new starts. And I think, I'm hoping that I'll have all but one of my mania from last year finished so that I can fill in all the rest. I'll do five whips again this year and then a whole bunch of new starts. But if I finish this one in January, this one in February, this one in March, and this one in April. Actually, I'll probably go the other direction. I was going to do this one next, but, but I had to do this one because it was right underneath this one. Um, then I will have it done before a mania in May. So that's my goal. So that's why I work on it a little bit every day. So this is how far I've gotten on January's piece. Love that bird with her awesome headdress hat she's got going on there. Work done finished the, uh, oh, I'm sure there's a nautical term for that, a log that is pounded down into the dirt underneath the water, piling, a pile. <laughs> I think it's a piling. The bird has finished the log piling the bird is sitting on top of and some more fish started on the water at the bottom. Oh, and I'm using the called for colors, except after finishing all four blocks across the top, I just kept thinking how I wasn't happy with that watercolor. It's a very gray blue. So when I started on this block right here, I decided to try a new color, which is the color it calls for is NPI 522, which is a very gray blue. And so starting on that fifth block, I switched over to Belsoi Bahama Breeze, which looked more like water to me, and I felt worked well with the rest of the colors in the piece. Not sure if I was going to like it or not, but I ended up really liking it. So I started that in this block here, and then this center block that I did in, finished up in November, I used that color. This block didn't have any of that watercolor in it, so this block doesn't have 
water, that particular watercolor in it, it was going with all grays, partly because it's a memorial block for um, a seaman who passed away, which is why the flags are all black. So I think what I'll do is continue to use that new Belsois Bahama Breeze for all of these blocks. And then this very last block back here, which I was going to stitch last, but now is stitching now. I will go back to the original watercolor on this one, that 522, just to tie it all in together. And when I was, uh, I know I told you this last time, when I was looking at changing the watercolor, I was looking at the model picture and realized that these, the watercolor used up here does not look like the same watercolor that was used all in these all down here. It looks like they changed their mind halfway through the model stitching, but the color on the pattern is the same color for all of this water. It is the same color. So I realized that I didn't notice that on this block that she was using, that she had a one color up here and then changed to a completely different color down here for the water. If I didn't notice it, no one else was going to notice that I changed colors halfway through. But I think I will do that last block, this same color that I used up here just to tie it, just to feel like it ties all together. Like it was a, like I did it on purpose, right? I think it'll look great. All right, that's Shores which I think is coming along. It'll come along a lot faster now that I don't have to uh, keep filling in that light gray on the block above. Now that that's done, that block will come along a lot faster. We're only on, what are we, the 21st today? So I need to get uh, get going on that, get that done. Of course, we still have almost two more weeks, so I think we're fine. All right, and then on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I kind of call that my focus piece for the month because it tends to get three days of work on it every week is Adventure Awaits, which is maybe in this bag. I keep forgetting to show you all my bags. I showed you this one already at the end of my end of year. Um, this is what Shores is. It's a mesh bag. It's just a little bit nicer version of a mesh bag because it has this zipper pocket in the front and it has handles and it says Prestige on it right here. I did find out that you can buy this on the Dick Blick Art Supplies website, which I believe is blick.com. But it's, um, if you just do a search for prestige mesh bag, this will come right up. And I think it was, what did I tell you? I told you this in my other video. $8, I want to say. It comes in three different sizes. I believe this is the 12 by 16 size. I like the size because I can fit my 11 by 11 inch Q snaps in here and it zips closed and it's um, pretty waterproof unless you use it so much that you get tiny get tiny little holes down here. When you're taking it to the beach and you want to put it down on the sand that doesn't look wet but actually is wet then it's great or if you have grandkids or if you travel a lot or you have it in the car and you spill your drink it's great. Um, my green garden is just in one of these right now one of these mesh bags. And Disneyland is in this tote bag that I bought at the Walmart right by Disneyland. I love it. It has Minnie Mouse on the front. It does zip closed. It um, doesn't have any pockets on the inside or anything. It's just a tote bag that zips closed at the top. But I did, while I was there, also buy this cute little purse. came with a strap as well. It has two zipper compartments. Three? No, two as the notions bag to put in there. Also at Walmart next to Disneyland. I'm sure you could get them online or somewhere, I don't know. This is a bag I bought from Shepherd's Bush and the tag says Shepherd's Bush, so I'm assuming they made these themselves. This is my Adventure Awaits project. And it also came with a notions bag at Shepherd's Bush. I don't know if they haven't been there for a long time, so I don't know if they still, I think they still make bags and sell them in their store. They don't always list everything on their website that they have. That store is chock full of awesome goodies everywhere. So uh, sometimes you just need to call them and ask if you're not actually going to be able to go there. All right, this Adventure Awaits was a mystery stitch along last year by Caterpillar Cross Stitch. And she is at caterpillarcrossstitch.com if you're interested in this pattern. Looks like she also has a Facebook group, Instagram, several other ways to see her stuff. 
and I believe she's in the UK. I think. And I um, joined last year, partway through this mystery stitch along. I saw it and, and paid the money because she just sends it out by PDF once a month for, it was eight or nine months. I can't remember how many parts I had. But my life was nuts last year, completely nuts. And so I didn't have a chance to stitch it, but I just saved all the patterns and knew I wanted to start it. So this was my New Year's Day start. It is on 36 count Mount Baker blue linen. This is how far I've gotten. I've done North America, South America, started over here on, um, I'm terrible at geography. It's been too many years since I was in school. Greenland, I see, you know, something over here, this landmass, it's between here and then we're going to get over here into larger land masses over here. But that's where I am on that. Very happy with how this is coming along. Love this design. I think it's so cute. I've been, my daughter Catherine, my daughter Catherine, my daughter Marie, Marie, by the way, is still working on her Halloween mystery piece, which I need to look up the name so I can tell you what it is. But it was like a four part series, the year before last, maybe. And it was a mystery at the time. Now you can buy all four or five leaflets and, and she's um, stitching that. Gosh, I'm going to have to look that up. Sorry. But she um, doesn't stitch as, she stitches every once in a while. So that's what she's still working on. But she, when she was in high school, her best friend moved, and her whole family, her best friend's family moved to Brazil for a job the dad had down there. And they lived there for two or three years, and they invited us to come and visit. And I thought, oh, how could you pass up that opportunity? We just had to pay for the flight. They picked us up at the airport. We stayed with them. They took us around and showed us everything. We stayed there for 10 days, she and I. My husband wasn't able to go. Um, she, it was over fall break, so she missed the three days that she had off for fall break, plus she missed another four or five days of school. But all that was fun. And one of the places we went to see was this Christus that's in Brazil. That was so, that brings back memories for me when I was teaching that. We had so much fun there. Saw all the sights. But that's been very fun. Um, Caterpillar Cross Stitch has a new mystery stitch along for this year that starts this Friday, the 25th. It starts the 25th is when the first section will come out. You can still sign up for that at her, at her website, caterpillarcrossstitch.com. It's very similar colors. Did I bring it down here? And it's called Seize the Day. S-E-A-S, -E the day. Seize, like ocean, seize the day. Um, My sister-in-law and I are going to start it together, and she was so nice. You can order the matching needle minder from CaterpillarCrossStitch.com, and she'll mail it to you. You can get the kit in paper if you'd... I'm not sure if you can get the monthly updates in paper. I think you can, the monthly piece as it comes out, um, if you want it, but it's coming from the UK. But she ordered her and I one of these magnets. So you... I think the magnet kind of gives you an idea of the style. I think these are little beach huts. Of the, If you go on her website, you can see like a blurred out version of what it's going to look like. So you can kind of get an idea of the size and, you know, you can kind of sell, see the layout just a little bit. I'm, I didn't do her called for fabric. I pulled one out of my stash, which is... Lakeside Linens 36 Count Maritime White. That's what I'm going to do mine on. Hers was on a light sand color is what she... You can you can get the whole kit from her, I believe, if you want to go that way. But I'm doing mine on a very light sand beigey color. The first part will be out on the 25th, and then it will come out once a month on the 25th. I think through August. It has that many pieces. These are the colors. So again, a very bright fun, beachy, summery color palette. I'm excited. I can't wait. My sister-in-law, Juliana, and I are excited to start that on the 25th. All right. Let's put that back in this bag where we lose things. 
Oh, the inside fabric on the shepherd's bush bag is this cute green. There's these little things on it. There's a fabulous zipper at the top. Heavy duty zipper, which I need. <laughs> I'm hard on my bags. <laughs> All right, the Tuesday project. What's Tuesday? Oh, Tuesday project. Every Tuesday I work on, as you remember, if you've watched my videos, I did a stocking report in November and had each of my kids show their Christmas stockings that they've had since they were young. The rule was that the Christmas st their stocking had to be done by the time they were old enough to realize that their stocking didn't match everyone else's. So usually by about three-ish is when kids notice that kind of thing. So all of them have theirs done. Some early on, Catherine's is like 18 months. You know, that's the first child, of course. As you get further along, I have four children, then I'm pretty sure Andrew's was done by the time he was three, but it might have been close. Might have been like two and a half. <laughs> but um, we realized this year, Andrew got married in July. He had several, he had his home. He, when they got married, he had to pack up several places. Um, they had his room here. She had her room at her house. He had a singles apartment that he was living in. And then they had also gotten a married apartment that they started paying rent on a couple months before they got married because they knew they were going to need it. And apartments are hard to find down here for a reasonable price. Well, then like a month before they got married, he was offered or maybe like two or three weeks. I don't think it was very far, really close to the wedding. He was offered a job in St. George, which is about four hours south of here. And he accepted the job. So they got married, went on their honeymoon, came home from their honeymoon and had like five days to move to St. George. So he was packing up all of the, all their stuff in all these different places. They were trying to get packed up and moved. And in the process, because he had taken his Christmas stocking home last Christmas to his singles apartment, because that's where he was Christmas morning and I wanted him to have it Christmas morning, he brought it back to me somewhere in that move. He and his fiance at the time remember packing it up before they got married and, and bringing it back to me. We were in the middle of a remodel at our house at the same time. So I wasn't able to put it where it belongs, which I always do. I'm very organized. I don't lose things. <laughs> but this Christmas, we realized we can't find his stocking. We don't know where it is. I have no way. The remodel is finished. Everything's put away. Um, they've unpacked all their stuff in St. George. I don't know what happened to that poor stocking. So we are going to have to restitch his stocking, which we know as soon as I restitch it, it's going to show up somewhere. But I have searched this house high and low thoroughly. I just can't find it. So, but when we did the stocking report in November with all my kids, I found out that my two daughter-in-laws would like a stocking that matches as well their husbands. They're going to do probably do something different for their children, but they would like a stocking that matches their husbands. So I said, I'd be happy to make you stockings. My own daughters, I told them they could cross stitch. They know how to cross stitch. They can make their own or decide, you know, I didn't want my kids to feel obligated that they had to continue this stocking pattern, tradition on, cross stitch, whatever, to their own families. Do whatever you want to do for your family. You and your husband need to decide what you want to do for stockings. But my two, since my two daughter-in-laws asked, I said for sure I would make them one. So I started one for my daughter-in-law, Hannah, because she's been part of our family the longest. Michael got married before Andrew did. They've been married for several years. Have two children. Sorry, everything's stuck to the magnets. And the stocking is in my Ever Tote bag. Her, I think it was the one, she, her monthly bag in December. I, I loved it and ordered it and bought it. Ever Tote. It's gorgeous. Um, this is where I am. I finished these apples, the greenery around these apples this week, and then started on the stovepipe up here. There's a huge... Um, Wood burning kitchen stove right here because this is the kitchen one. This is the one Hannah chose. Where's the book? You can still they these stocking series was in the Cross Stitch and Country Crafts magazine by Better Homes and Gardens back in the day. Started in the 80s. They did one every July August issue in the same series. Um, then they maybe oh somewhere in the last five or eight years. They reprinted them in this booklet, Better Homes and Gardens did. And they have nine of the stockings in the series in this book. And I have all the magazines, but I bought the book because the magazines are on the newsprint kind of paper and they're starting, they're 30 years old now or older, 35 years old. So they're starting to, that paper is starting to um, 
degrade and almost disintegrate in some places where it gets folded a lot. So I bought this really nice book. It's on um, the slick paper. And you can also get these stocking patterns at the Cooler Design Studio website, K-O-O-L-E-R. I believe that um, she was one of the designers that designed for this magazine, which is why you can get them there. And you can buy them one just one at a time, like you could just want this stocking or you just want this stocking. And I did notice there are two more stockings on her site that are not in this book. One is a gardening book a gardening stocking, like you're a gardener, so it's like the garden shed. And then another one, I believe, if I'm remembering correctly, was kind of an outdoors hunting, fishing kind of a theme to it. So all my kids' stockings are out of this series. Hannah chose the kitchen stocking. Sorry, I'm, I'm a little scattered this morning. I'm not remembering what I'm talking about. So this is the stocking. What I'm doing for Hannah. I have three stockings to finish by Christmas, so I figured this one needs to be done by the end of April, right? <laughs> if I'm doing three, so I need to get a move on. But that's what it will look like. And so I'm just up here on this stove pipe for this kitchen stove right here, which is one of my favorite parts of the stocking. This was the one I also did for Catherine. So this is the second time I've done the stocking, but it's been 30 years, so it's okay to redo it. I don't remember. Some of it brings back memories, but it's not so recently that I I'm hating it because I don't like to do designs twice, but this one's been quite fun to revisit after 30 years. Um, so that's where I am on that one. This is on 28 count mushroom Lugana because that is what all the other stockings are on and it needs to match. And I can't remember anything else I was supposed to tell you about that stocking. It is the called for DMC. And anyone who's been stitching since the 80s and 90s <laughs> have all those color families that were so popular back there memorized. The 500 series, the 930, 931, 932 blues, the 221, 222, 223 mauves are all in here. Very retro. This ever tote bag has this on the inside, this fabric off the grid needle arts. She makes these. And I have the little notions bag that goes with it. All right. That, so I'm going to work on stock. I work on stockings every Tuesday for the rest of the year and hopefully get three done. Uh, I already talked about the menu. So the Thursday project is Northern Expressions, which I have in my so much to love. This was the bag of the month this month. I showed it to you last week by so much to love. S E W M U C H the number two L U V dot com. You can still join that if you want to get her bag of the month. This one is so gorgeous. These beautiful little red birds and these gray trees, which looks like um, quaking aspens to me. Beautiful red rickrack. Oh, just gorgeous. But since this this is Twisted Band Sampler by Northern Expressions, and it's January, and this is very wintry Northern. I figured this was the perfect bag for Northern Expressions. I do, I did join the Bag of the Month Club, so I'll get one every month, and as I get them, I will transition my, definitely my current pieces into them. I love these project bags. I don't have very many of them, but I will, because I love them. All right, let's see if I can do this without making a complete mess. Now I've got a thread caught in a zipper. There we go. <laughs> I chose the bigger size of this Bag of the Month Club. It does have a gusseted bottom, so it's um, a little bit bigger down here a lot of stuff. I chose this size because I wanted an 11 by 11 Q-snap to be able to fit in it with all the stuff that goes with the pattern. And the inside is this beautiful gray. And I also chose the option of getting the Notions bag every month. Beautiful. All righty. This is Twisted Band Sampler by Northern Expressions. 
It comes in two different versions. You can get it in all a full cross stitch, just cross stitch, or you can get it that has specialty stitches in it. So you, if you don't like specialty stitches, you can get the same beautiful pattern with no specialty stitches. It's all straight cross stitch, no half stitches, just full cross, I believe. Or you can get it with the, there is a band of different specialty stitch between every color. Um, this is what it will look like when it's finished. I love the colors. Love the rainbow colors in this. She has a different, she has a couple of band samplers similar to this, different ones, and she has a different, some different colorways. If you like a different color palette, rainbow color palette, I really like this one. More earth, earth tones for me. Love this. Gorgeous. So I am right here in the yellows. I'm excited to move on to the greens and blues and purples because those are my favorite. Love green and blue. Those are my favorite colors. But it's Northern Expressions Twisted Band Sampler. I'm doing mine on Lakeside Linen Bisque, 32 count, with one strand of Avera Soi silks that was the called for silks. One strand of silk over two strands, two threads, fabric threads. Silk is a little bit thicker than DMC. So one strand of silk has better coverage than one strand of DMC. Just a, which is why I, I'm liking the coverage okay. On, I wouldn't normally do one strand on 32 count, but I'm like, oh, that reminds me. Somebody asked me what size needle Catherine and I use. I should have written it down. Sorry, I should have said your name. Um, I, the size need, I use Peacemaker needles, those are my favorite, and the size needle I use is, depends on how big the fabric is. So if it is, I have to think about this, if it is 14 count or 28 count, that's 28 threads per inch if you're using linen, or if you are on Ada, because it's just one square, that is 14 squares per inch, so that's why it's called 14 slash 28 count. Those are both the same size stitches. It's just depending on whether you've got linen threads where you're going over two threads at a time or whether you're using Ada, which is just a square. So 14, 28 count, 14 slash, 20, 14 count Ada or 28 count linen over two threads. I would use a 24 count, 24 size needle. And I remember that because the 24 matches 14. If I'm using 16 count Ada, which would be 32 count linen, then I use a 26 needle. Um, if I'm using 36 count or 40 count linen, which would be 18 count Ada, or I don't even know if you can buy a 20 count Ada, I'm not sure. Um, then I use the, the smallest needle. I think you, in general, most needle companies, a 28 is the smallest. So as the number goes up, the needles get smaller. Then I use a 28 count needle if I'm using working on 36 count or 40 count linen, which would be 18 count Ada. So the 28 matches 18, that eight matches, that helps me remember. Um, if your needle is too big for the size fabric that you're using, it's great because you can thread it easier because the hole, the eye is bigger. It will actually leave a hole in the, it will push the threads apart as it goes through, which isn't a big deal on Ada. Ada is pretty, um, tight. You can't make a bigger hole in Ada unless you really try. But linen, it will spread those threads apart a little bit, which is not a big deal. It just means you're going to have, your holes are going to be a little bit bigger whenever thread went in and out. It just changes the look. Not a big deal. So if your needle is too big for the fabric, it will actually leave a hole whenever you go through or make the hole a little bit bigger. If your needle is too small for your fabric, if you have bigger fabric, you're quite often using two strands. And if your needle eye is too small for those two strands, as it's pulling in and out, it um, and the eye with those two strands squished into that little eye, it tends to shred your thread. It will break right there where the needle is. That's the other thing about if your needle is too big for your fabric, it will it um, stresses those threads every time it goes through those tiny holes because the needle is too big and then the threads making it even a little bigger right there. So every time it goes through the hole, it will rub on those threads and you might have your thread break right there where it's going in and out. So it might shred your thread there too. Um, and there's something to be said when you have the exact right 
fabric with the right size needle, with the right thread, you know, whether you're doing two strands or one strand or whatever you're doing for that size that you're doing for the look you want, there is something when it's all just right and the colors, I'm big on colors, when the colors look good to me and are pleasing to me on that piece of fabric and there's nothing that's bothering me about it, there is a magic, just a, oh, you're just that feels so good to work on that piece and if you you might not even know why you love working on that piece but it's because when there's something about it when the needle's the right size the thread is perfect the, for that size fabric and the colors are working well and you can read the chart okay and you've got your stuff organized so that it's easy to find sometimes it's I don't want to work on a project because there's something wrong that I need that's bothering me that I need to fix so I'll try and figure out what it is and try and fix it maybe my I didn't take the time to organize my threads very well and that's driving me crazy. Maybe I can't read the pattern very well and I need to make a bigger copy of it or a better copy of it or make a working copy so I can fold it up and highlight on it because it's complicated. Whatever it is, try and figure out what is this bothering you and see if you can fix it. Sometimes you can't fix it and you just have to restart the, fab the chart on something else or give it up altogether because you're just not enjoying it. But I usually try and figure out, there went my light. <laughs> But this is Northern Expressions Twisted Band Sampler. Let me fix that, hang on. This specialty stitch that I'm working on right here that I started right here is called a sheaf stitch because it looks like a sheaf of wheat. I'm going to show you the diagram that came with the pattern. It looks like a sheaf of wheat, a bunch of wheat tied together in a sheaf. Most um, patterns that call for specialty stitches will give you a fabulous stitch diagram just like that for every specialty stitch. And the designers work really hard on those diagrams. It tells you it's numbered. It tells you exactly you come up at one, you go down at two, you come up at three, you go down at four. So, and especially on a band sampler like this, which a sampler is a teaching piece, right? Girls started making samplers because they were learning. This one's great because you start up here trying out the specialty stitch that maybe you've never stitched before and you're going all the way down here with it. So by the time you're over to here, you pretty much have it memorized in your head. You don't have to look at the pattern, the diagram anymore. And you're getting a lot better at it. You're looking at maybe you're pulling too hard or you're not pulling hard enough, making that stitch look good. So it really is a great practice for that specialty stitch all the way down. This particular pattern has two colors that are cross-stitched. This is two colors. This up here was two colors. This was two colors of just straight cross-stitch. And then it will do, it's the same specialty stitch, but in two different colors all the way down. Or it might be two specialty stitches um, together. This one's going to have a sheaf stitch, and then it's going to have something else right next to it. So it's not just the sheaf stitch. This pattern is taking me longer than I thought it would when I'm getting to these full lines. Oh, another thing to start right here when you sometimes when you're doing a specialty stitch because it's got long stitches you're not quite sure how you're going to anchor that thread underneath because there's not the tight X's that you can anchor underneath and if you're just starting it out in the middle of blank fabric somewhere then you can't um, anchor it on the stitching next to it because this has quite a bit of white space between this and this. I didn't want to carry the thread across behind. Um, one good way to start when, or anytime you're in that situation, maybe you have um, some snowflake out in the middle of nowhere and you can't anchor it somewhere else and you're not sure yet how you're going to anchor it on the back. You're not sure what the back stitches are going to look like where you can anchor. You can use a, a way knot or a waist knot. So you can tie a knot in your thread. The way my mom taught me was you wrap the wrap it around like this. So you have the, and then you just, that's why I lick my finger. You just twist it down like this so you have a great big mess. And then you get your fingernail right here, let go and pull it. And it will make a nice big knot for you. We do not usually make knots in cross stitch, right? Because you don't want knots on the back that are going to be make it all bumpy when you get it framed or lumpy. 
you can make an, I would go at least a needle and a half distance away from where you want to start and you can come down from the top with your needle and just sink it anywhere, at least a needle and a half away from where you're going to start. Pull it all the way through so that knot is just sitting on top of your stitching right here. Then come up right here and do your stitching. And then when you've gone a ways and you can tell on the back what it's going to look like and where maybe you could anchor that thread, then you go back and you cut that, pull it up a little bit so you're not next to your stitching because you don't want to accidentally cut your stitching. Pull it up a little bit, cut that knot off, the thread will come to the back, you can thread your needle on it, and then you can hide your thread where it would, where you, now that you can see what those, what that specialty stitch is going to do on the back, then you can kind of figure out where you're going to have to weave your needle through to do it. Now the other thing you can do, which I should have done and was not thinking, probably had a headache, sink your, if you know your stitching is going to come down this way, sink your knot down here somewhere and then the knot will be sitting here, your needle will come to the back, you'll come up right here at the top where you're, and as you're stitching along that thread will automatically get covered up and then when you get close to that knot you can just cut the knot and it will already be covered in the back. Sometimes you can do that, sometimes you can't. If I'd been thinking I would have done that, then I didn't. I didn't know a way knot up here and then hit it later. But that's uh, one way you can start specialty stitches when sometimes you can't anchor your thread underneath very well. The reason why you want to go at least a needle and a half distance away is because you need a big enough tail that you can get your needle threaded back on it. And, and I always just gauge the, I'm just like, oh, I'll go about this far away. That's plenty long enough. And then I'll actually measure it with my needle and go, oh, no, that is not far enough. That tail is not going to be big enough to get threaded on a needle and then hide under in the back. The other thing, this fabric is very open weave. You can see through it very easily. It's an open weave fabric, linen, because it's bigger. It's 32 count. If you are curious, I try really hard not to carry a thread across the back more than one stitch. I'm, I'm usually very good about that, especially if it's a dark color thread and your fabric is light, because it will show through when you get it framed or whatever you're going to do with it. If you're curious whether the thread you're carrying across the back is going to show or not, maybe you're doing a bunch of snowflakes out in the middle of the sky and there's just really no, you're doing one stitch here and there and you can't figure out, you can do a pin stitch if you really need to do something dark out in the middle of the sky and you can't carry that thread anywhere because it's going to show. So look up pin stitch on the on Google, it will show you how to do it. That's a fabulous way to do it. But if you're curious whether a carried thread across the back, you've carried a thread across the back under a blank fabric that's not going to be covered up later and you want to know if it's going to show through or not, then take a, most framers put a piece of mat board behind your fabric when they frame it. You know, when you get a frame from the store, it comes with a piece of cardboard in it. And I usually, if I'm framing myself to something that doesn't matter, I'll just wrap it around that piece of cardboard that came. The framer will usually match that piece of cardboard to the color of your fabric. So if it's a, a, on white fabric, they'll put a piece of white mat board back there. If it's on black fabric, they'll put a piece of black mat board back there. You can request a particular color. Um, if you have open work or something that's going to show back there, you can put a colored mat back there and it shows through. It's really awesome. So if you're curious, put a white piece of paper behind your stitching. Like on this is white fabric and it would probably be get framed with a white piece back there. Put a white piece of paper back there that will fill in all that white like it is when it's framed and you'll be able to tell exactly what it's going to look like when it's framed and whether that thread is going to show that you've carried across the back. Rule, good rule of thumb is just don't carry your threads across the back. I know it's a pain but you really need to end your thread and start a new thread if you need to carry back across the back. I get lazy and I will carry it across a, for a stitch, one stitch, maybe two stitches across the back, but no more than that because I hate it. That's one of my pet peeves is when you're looking at stitching and you can see the carried threads. That's, that's a bad sign. Don't do that. <laughs> All right. I think that was everything I was going to tell you about that one. Sorry. That went on forever. But I'm enjoying that. I love that. Special, some specialty stitches I haven't done for a long time. Some of them I've never done. It's fun to try new ones and see what they look like. Every once in a while I get a wild hair and want to put a specialty stitch in a piece that doesn't even call for it just because I think it would look cool right there. All right. 
that's the Thursday project. I work on that every Thursday. When that's done, that is a, oh, I was supposed to be telling you. I am doing the Stitch 9 challenge with Michelle Rudy of her channel is Farm Girl. She just challenged all of us to pick nine pieces and try and finish them by the end of the year, nine whips. Or if you wanted to start something new, just nine things that you want to finish by the end of the year. And my Stitch 9... I'll tell you, after I go through all my whips, I'll tell you which ones are stitch nines and which ones aren't. When I finish Northern Expressions on Thursdays, Twisted Band Sampler, I don't, I'm trying to remember. It is, it is a Mania piece. That's why I'm trying to finish. That's why I do that on Thursdays, because I would like to have that done by Mania in May. But it's also one of my Stitch 9 challenges as well. So I need to finish that. When I finish that on Thursday, then I'll pick another one and start working on that one on Thursday. I have a hard time. My Tuesday, Thursday pieces are usually ones that I, I don't um, enjoy working on for long stretches of a time. I'll, I'll put it down and think, no, I don't want to stitch tonight. I don't want to work on that. But if I make myself pick it up every Thursday, then I'm enjoying it. And it gets a little progress. And I'm thinking, what was I love this piece. Why was I not going to work on this piece? It's dumb. It's all a mind game, right? All right. Weekends, I work on Victorian Charm Dimension, Dimensions Kit. And there is a stitch along, a hashtag for this. I think it's Victorian Charm SAL. There's some people who are working on it, if you happen to be working on it as well. This is where I am. I finished this roof did this roof detail and up here and then started on some of the half stitches that are in the sky. I work on this on Saturdays. Sometimes I stitch on Sundays, not often, but Saturdays and sometimes Friday nights. But that's where I am on that one. Still loving it. Still love those colors. Lots of blended threads, lots of back stitching that I'll do as I go because I hate leaving the back stitch until the end. But you do have to have everything touching it done before you can do the back stitch because back stitching goes over the top of your stitching. And if you put it on somewhere next, the stitching next to it's not done yet, and you put the back stitch along the edge, then it's really hard to get your stitches underneath that back stitching when you go to do that thing that's right next to it. So I always try and wait until all the stitching that's going to be touching it is done before I do the back stitch. But I do do it as I go because I hate leaving it till the very end. And I am using the kit threads for that piece that came with the kit and the fabric that came with the kit, which is 18 count, a very navy blue Ada. I tried switching to a beautiful hand dyed, I think it was Mystic, gorgeous, because I wasn't going to have to do any of that sky detail because it was already hand dyed, dark sky, kind of cloudy. But I don't know if it was because I was, I don't know if I did 36 count or 40 count. I don't know if it was just so small that I couldn't, I could not see those holes for the life of me. Could not see those holes. So I went back to the 18 count Ada and I'm loving it because you can see the holes. And I forgot to tell you, this was a bag that I also bought at Shepherd's Bush. It does not have a tag on it anywhere of who made it. It was just on their shelf of bags there. I love it. I love the colors. I just thought it was so cute. And the inside fabric looks like this. Pretty. But it was like probably eight years ago. So I have no idea if they still have the, that color or if they still have those kind of bags. It was really cute because it has some has some fabulous pockets on the inside, organizing pockets, and then it also has this cute Velcro pocket on the outside. It's a beautiful bag. All right, I think that's all the whips. Let me run through my list and make sure. Yes, it is. All right, so let's go on to old, old finishes. Today I decided to show you Rosewood Manor Past and Present. I finished this a few years ago. Some people that, of my, the, my friends in Salt Lake, most of them used to belong to the Swan Sampler Guild that um, disbanded is no longer around, but we still get together and stitch. We were stitching this together as a stitch along, I believe. And here it is. It has some fun darning stitches up here at the top. This beautiful alphabet. And then this, all of these 
black work, different kinds of black work. Black work is not my favorite, so I was glad to get past that part. Another beautiful alphabet. And then it has these, I believe they're um, darning stitches across here. A whole bunch of different band of darning stitches. And then it has, in the middle, it has some hard anger with cutout pieces. So when I get this framed, I will definitely choose what color mat I want to go behind it because that's going to show through that cut work and the color of it will change the way it looks. And then has these beautiful motifs down here at the bottom. I love every Rosewood Manor piece that comes out. I love the colors. I love the layout. I just love it. But they're not my favorite. You know how you can you can love how a pattern looks, but not love stitching it. And Rosewood Manor changes color so often. It's not blended threads, it just changes color so often that sometimes that's not my favorite. But oh, I love their patterns. Love them. This was done on, and I actually wrote it on here, organized me finally, 36 count Lakeside Maritime White Vintage you know how vintage changes the color. So it's vintage maritime white. Oh, and it has, it has beads on it, but just a few right in the cut work, in the hard anger section, there's a couple of beads in there, some off-white beads. And I believe those were not the beads that were called for in the pattern. I think we chose smaller beads maybe because we were, I don't know, because maybe we were doing it on 36 count. That was fun. I need to get that one framed. Of course, you wouldn't be able to see it as well if I got it framed, right? And then for what I wish I was working on, I wish I was working, I pulled this out of my stash the other day and remembered that I had it. This is Mora Blackburn Time and Season Sampler. And it has the verse on it. To everything there is a season and a time, to every purpose under heaven, Ecclesiastes. And it has a capital border across the top and then a smaller case border across the bottom of the border. Love that song. Love that scripture. That song from the 70s. Love the piece. I've had it forever. I really should just stitch it at some point. Love that piece. That's what I wish I was stitching on today. On this windy snowy day. All right. I think that's everything. Thanks for joining me today. Hope you have a fabulous stitchy week and I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.